Okay. Yes. All right. It's yes. five o'clock. There's a rainbow across my screen. This going this way. Um, I'm SLP. This is Watch Me Work, where we get together on uh, as often as we can, which means most Mondays, and we work together, <laughs> even though we're working separately on different things. I believe in a deep togetherness of this community, and we work together, and we encourage each other, even uh, sometimes it's even not vocal, and we work together, and then we talk about your work and your creative process. Um, and I just, I love this community. And uh, yeah, so if you guys have a question, <laughs> I'm looking at this rainbow going, woo. Um, if you guys have a question about your work and your creative process, uh, New York Development folks are gonna tell you how to get in touch. Oh, but first we got to thank the New York Development Department at the Public Theater. And we have to thank HowlRound all these years of supporting and encouraging this mission, this program, this community. We are so grateful. Um, and so, okay, so tell us how to get in touch if we have a question, please. Yeah, when the 20 minutes of working session is over, please go ahead and use your raise the hand function under your reactions button, and we'll get a nice queue of questions going, and then we will call in you and ask you to please unmute. Awesome. Beautiful. I'm chewing ice. And uh, let's get started.
All right. That was 20 minutes. That was 20 minutes. I'm going to fix this lighting here. Look at this. Exciting. The, the lighting is exciting. Um, <laughs> we're ready to... We're ready to take questions about your work and your creative process process and happy like daylight savings time, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Um Crystal, would you like to uh, start us off by unmuting yourself? Hey. Hello. Hey, how you doing, darling? I'm I'm hanging in there. I'm doing good. No complaint. Are you back home? Yes. Yes, I'm back home back to the grind, making dinner and everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna come visit you, mm, dinner. Oh, you yeah, we're making enchiladas today. Did you go down to North Carolina for research? No, I went to visit um, friends and family. It just happened to work out that um, I was there. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my friends said that she's gonna introduce me to a couple of natives um and and hopefully that'll help with the next draft cool um, yeah so i i finished the first draft congratulations thank you um the second act is a little sh it's shorter than i wanted it to be it's 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 very charged but i realized the whole play is charged so mm -hmm. i started writing well not started i i'm almost finished the second draft of the second act Wow. And awesome. thank you. I, I, but as I was writing that, I realized that it's a, it's a lot more, um, a lot more tame. Mm. And so I, they're kind of two extremes. And I was kind of wondering, you know, if I am, which I, which we've talked about this a long time ago, but like, <laughs> if I am allowing the circumstances and the story to unfold within itself, or if I am trying to drive. Um, because now I have like these two very different acts, uh, uh, second acts, and I'm not, I'm not happy with both, I, but I don't know what the right answer is. I did the list. Uh -huh. You told me write a list one time for another play, write a, 10 stupid things. And I did, uh, I did like 15 <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, wow, these are all pretty dumb. Um, but I, I was able to find something that I could kind of play with. Um, and so now it's just, you know, while I, I definitely still have like research things to work on, mm -hmm. I'm still trying to write the humanity of, and the story, the elements of the story. So I guess my question comes back to now there are, are kind of like choices, but not really choices I'm very thrilled about. Mm -hmm. um, am I on my way to writing a third, second act or uh, um, just uh, do I need to, I don't know if I need to stop and listen. This was, this process was so much easier when I just didn't <laughs> think about so many things. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. But now it's 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 become more complicated, and I feel also that it's gotten so um, heavy and so dark that I'm still uh -huh. trying to find the hope. And I think in trying to find the hope, I'm trying to force a happy ending, but it's not uh, letting me do that. I, right. I'm having trouble finding the the light in the story because um, instead right. of two protagonists, I wanted the protagonist to be the friendship uh -huh. and can it survive in these times? And it's, it's showing that it's just not, uh, it's, it's not. Is that, can we, can you live with that? That it, 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 if the friendship doesn't survive? Uh, I think my problem is that I'm, I'm a romantic. I want things to work out all the time. I want good things to happen. I want, I want, things to work out. But I know like in life, that's, you know, that's not always the case. Right. I know. I'm a romantic too. And so I cry a lot. You know? Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, things don't work out and 
I think sometimes when we're sometimes what we do as writers, if we show it how it is instead of how we're forcing it to be because we just don't want to deal with something that I'm not saying this is you, Crystal, but we just don't want to deal with the bad thing, you know, and we want to and we want to show a happy thing because happy things, I don't know, sell. You know, I mean, no, this is not what you're saying, but I'm saying in the marketplace that ha upbeat, happy sells and, and we're encouraged to write upbeat stories. Um, but uh, people need to know that you can go on after something devastating happens too. I mean, what is tragedy for? You know, I mean, back in the olden days, in the olden days, you know, mm -hmm. you know, where they, you know, they had plays, you know, like, I don't know, like King Lear, you know, you know, King Lear, poor guy, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, or Hamlet or the Scottish husband and wife team, you know, right. but you know, King Lear is a wonderful example because he, you know, he thought, you know, this is how to do it. I'm going to divide up my kingdom and then, ah, you know, and sometimes those plays, we, we need to, as a culture, I think, learn how to talk about the difficult things, learn how to endure the difficult things. You know, we, in this culture, and especially in American culture, we're taught that winning is everything. And if you don't win, you're a loser. Mm -hmm. And if you're a loser, yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, sometimes um, there is loss and sometimes there's hardship and sometimes there's heartbreak. And we need to know that we can, we can keep going, you yeah. know? We don't have to, we don't have to have it all be a Hollywood happy ending. Yay. You know, um, I think that creates a, a, a certain expectation for ourselves for, I mean, speaking for our kids, you know, the wonderful, there's a wonderful, what's a, I have to, either she's a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure. She's a professional, a mental health specialist uh, named Dr. Ruth. Have you, has anybody ever heard of this woman named Dr. Ruth? Yeah, she's, she's amazing. Uh, she's in her 90s, I believe. And, and she said, um, once she said, you know, people, especially Americans, they have to, they have to really understand what it means to lose things. We, we, we just want to pretend it doesn't happen. We won, you know, um, which creates things like a great dissonance, like uh, just after um, like the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. People hated on the service people who came back after that war hated them men and women who had been drafted you know they went they didn't go because they wanted to go you know they went because they're for anyway there was such hatred on them spewed on them uh, by a lot of peace and love activists uh anyway so blah 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 i'm just talking blah 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 but uh there might be heartbreak in your play crystal Mm -hmm. I'm not saying force it toward heartbreak. I'm also not saying, you know, don't force it toward heartbreak. Don't force it toward a happy ending. Um, just let it be what it is. You know, like you kid, you have kids, you know, how that goes. You, you can't force them to be, you just got to see what they are and kind of love them for what they are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I get it. And it's okay to like have sadness at the end of a play. I mean, is that, you know, I'm a romantic too. Just because you're a romantic doesn't mean, you, you know, I mean. So just, I'll just cry it out. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got to cry. Sometimes we, we need to be okay. You know, hey, sometimes it's sad and we cry and we comfort each other in our tears. Mm -hmm. you know yeah you know sometimes it, it's sad sometimes things are sad and difficult and we we, sh we, sh we shouldn't be af afraid of the you know like Pema Chodron has this great book the, the places that scare you you know again someone who says you know we have to face those difficult things yeah got it Thank you.
Thanks, honey. Ah, congratulations on finishing your, your draft. Yes. Thank you. Congrats, Crystal. Thank you. Rocky, if you could please unmute Master. Hey, Crystal. Rocky. How you doing, bro? Hey, good. How are you? Good. Um, okay, so this week I'm writing and I'm seeking your advice mm -hmm. basically on keeping momentum going through like that middle act one, early act two sort of era. And so this is my concept. Um, it's like an up or it's like a updated exploration of no exit mm -hmm. um except you'll kind of see what happens so this is like i'll just give you like a little paragraph overview really small um, rocky let me tell you before you tell we say it water boils best when the lid is kept on oh it, i'm really serious so i'm just telling you that and now you can do what you want but i'm just saying it's actually easier to write if we talk about your process and not your 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 play okay trust me on that one I, I just want yeah. to you talk to me about <clears throat> you're having if it were a, a piece of fabric on a clothesline right mm -hmm. sounds like it's having some tricky it's it's like there's not you're having difficulty getting through is that correct yeah it's like basically i have these four strangers meeting Okay. On Zoom. Okay. And um, something big happens, like, after the midpoint that changes everyone's life. Okay. But before the midpoint, I'm trying to get them to... It's, like, in the middle of the pandemic, so they're all just, like, getting to know each other. They're going uh -huh. deeper with each other. And, like, I'm, like, trying... I'm. I want to seek your advice on like how to like get people to connect and go deeper with each other without it uh -huh. seeming like I'm trying to like do that. Um, okay. And also just, just like keeping momentum going. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So we're going to, we can talk um about um geometry. Has anybody, has anybody taken a geometry class? Yes. Good. Okay. Somebody. Okay. In geometry, there's a, there's, I think it's called a truth or whatever. It's, it's, it's a, it's a reality of geometry truth uh, that says two points make a line. Has anybody ever heard of that? Two points make a line. So if you have a point here and you have a point here, you can, to those, the existence of those two points will make a line, right? Okay. What does this have to do with writing? Who knows? I'm just making this shit up, but Hey, it's true. The point where your character starts and the point where your character you want your character to end up, the that knowing those two points, right, creates lines of dialogue. Two points make a line. So when you're wondering, what is my character gonna say right here? Right? Re reignite, remember where they wanna go. Right? Which is another way of saying Tell yourself again and again, what do they want? Right? Okay. Like to, you know, uh, Hamlet. Hamlet wants to, well, he just wants to come home. Then he wants to find out who killed my dad. Then he wants to avenge his father's death. He wants, he wants, he wants. That drives pretty much everything that we see him do and say. He's he's reaching. Ah, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. I want to do something about it. I want to do something about it. Right. I'm simplifying that play, but just as a way to. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. get really clear. At, and what happens is when we when our characters stall out a lot of times, we're not uh, we haven't thoroughly excavated what it is that they want. OK. When the lines of dialogue dry up, we haven't articulated that point. Where are they going? Where are they heading? Okay. Maybe you maybe if you don't if you're not sure where they're heading, you can make up where they're where they where they end up at the end of the play. And if you're not sure about what they want, you can make up stuff. You know, maybe you know one of them wants to meet offline. One of them wants to read all the books on the other one's bookshelf. 
you know, I don't know what, you know, but you see what, does that help? Is that helpful? Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Thank okay. you. And just get them to talk to you, the writer about what they want. Okay. This is what Thank they want. You. This is what they want. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Rocky. Does anyone else have a question? Yes. Lori. Lori. Yes, Lori, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Hi, SLP. Hi, everybody. Hey, Lori. Hi there. Good to see you. Um, my, my question on process is I've been working on the um the full-length play called Sex Workers Revenge. It's based on the true story about the serial killer. Um, I took your advice there. All these sex workers are now in there as ghosts. They're doing outrageous things. Um, and I finished writing the first act. My question on my process of the second act, and this is something I've really been having trouble with is, um, there's, there's scenes where this, some things that happened to them was pretty violent. Um, mm -hmm. in fact, it was all very violent. Um, and I want to be able, I think some of the reason people don't understand how horrific these things are is because we don't see it anymore. You know, a lot of times in the media, you know, we just don't see if children get killed and all that stuff. But I, these women died a horrible death. And I feel like we need at least some essence of that. My question is, if I put some of that in as we move into act two, because now they're going to start to terrorize him while he's in jail. Ooh. And people see that, yeah, we're having some fun with poker games and tea parties and all kinds mm -hmm. of cool stuff. So, but as they're doing that, one of, one of the things I don't know is where do I stop like writing the stage directions of what I want to show and see and what I kind of hand over to trusting the director, you know, like, cause I feel like I'm getting, like I'm describing every little thing, even from what the violent stuff is to what you know, what's happening at the poker game and the tea party. And I, I don't want to overdo the stage directions, I guess, is my question. Do you know your director? I do not. No, I'm just writing it. Understood. So, so we, um, uh, I mean, collaboration is great. And, um, you know, to, to anticipate a collaboration with someone you haven't identified yet is slightly tricky. So I would say, number one, write everything down that you, you think needs to be written down. Because you've done the research, you know more about this than anybody right now. So you should take the lead and write down the things that you want to see on stage or that you want to hear about on stage. I have a question, though, about you're, you're, you're wanting to uh, show or talk about, you know, some very, uh, it sounds like violent acts. Is, uh, did I hear you right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they died these horrible deaths. All right. Of them, and yet here they are, you know. Uh, right. 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 Yeah. So how do how do we um, show that or, or include that and embrace that in a way that is uh, uh, that is mindful that. Um, we could veer into what would be called, you know, I don't know what trauma porn. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, and I, I should probably give like a, a trigger warning here, but you know, there's one woman who was uh, pretty brutally uh, mutilated. Um, so what I've done is I write this scene where this, this guy was a big hunter right and he hunted with a knife so they're sort of acting this out where she actually becomes the animal being hunted but i don't really show the actual violence but you kind of get the idea um what's going to happen through this scene right, that's right, right. he's describing it to the reporter he's being interviewed to a reporter but you know her ghost is there and and acting out this hunted scene. So that's kind of how I'm dealing with some. That was one. That's one example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Just, I just want you to really expand your imagination and all your resources so that 
and I, I feel like this is not your intent, but so that you're very mindful that, uh, you know, you don't want to just reenact violent acts, even involving animals. You know what I mean? We, you sort of, you have to, um, there have you, as you continue to work on it, I think you'll find strategies in which you can talk about what happened or frame what happened, but not in a way that you're um, just recreating some act, some right. series of violent acts, which is not what you want to do. I know that. I know that. So, yeah. you know, there's a, um yeah okay yeah yeah and and again it's been good to have it go through the staged readings because i'm getting feedback you know from the audience so i can right. specifically ask i guess in, in the talkbacks you know wh what people are feeling and if they're feeling that yeah sure that's a, that's a great way to to, to um you can uh, yeah yeah there's um you don't also don't have to tell everything, you know, or show everything. Right. Mind is a very powerful place. And um, you can, you know, just with three words, you can, um, because it's it, in a way, is it really about the violence that he did? Or is it about what they, how they endured or have come back to? Uh, spend some time with him yeah it's 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 you know I mean? a lot about what they've endured and why they're coming back you right know, they're, they're each right. coming back for a different reason i mean i right. tried to right. write that out right so yeah we don't you know you might not have to imp because you know re re revisiting the violent act might empower the wrong character okay yeah just i mean just you know i don't know and you're doing stage readings and your audiences will give you feedback but just think you know no that's good that's good advice to hear yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay it's tricky, Thank but you. congratulations for working on it it's 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 a big job and you sound like you're doing really great thanks thanks it's uh it's hard it's hard but it's it's uh yeah i do think it's important so right right yeah uh, definitely thank you Lori. thank you Thank you. Uh, Louise, if you could unmute yourself. Oops. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? It's um, great to see you, Louise. Oh. <laughs> uh, so um, I just want to piggyback on what she said and then also what you said because it brought to mind, this is just a comment. Um, I think your keyword, and you always, I tell my friends when I talk about um, Watch Me Work, I say what I love about it is that how you hone in individually to each person, which is, I, I think, so great. It's not like everybody gets kind of the same kind of answer. You know, you really, I think you really focus in on what the person is saying and which is of, of course a great gift but um your word the whole thing of endurance mm -hmm. because as we know people experience horrible things horrible things and talking about her work with the sex workers and what she intends to do with that brought to mind, and maybe some people might be familiar with this film. It's based on a true story. Um, they made a movie of it. It was made in India, and it was called The Bandit Queen. And many years ago, it was showing at MoMA, the series that they have, new directors, new films. And there was this woman, she was, well, you know how in different parts of the world, girls, boys, or just the parents sell them off, which is what happened to her. And they showed scenes where she get passed around, passed around, she get raped. This one would rape her, that group of men. But what she would do, what empowered her is, she would get raped and then she'd go on the war path and then she'd kill a bunch of men. 
And then she was in, she actually, this woman actually lived. She'd get up, she'd get her guns, her machete or whatever, and she'd go on a kill spree. Wow. And eventually wow. she was so empowered that she got elected to office in India. I have to go back and do the research mm. and look up her name, but a film was made on her. She was a real character, the Bandit Queen. Ultimately, oh, I think she was assassinated. But when you said the whole thing of endurance, because a, a lot of people suffer a lot, but it's like how you endure, how you, you know, come through, not so much in the reliving, but you, you never like really get past certain things. But um, I think listening to what you said, what struck me is, your work with endurance, because I think that that's key. So mm -hmm. I just want to mention that. Thank, thank you, Louise. And that's something that's a that's an offering that we can make to our audiences, because you know, Lori and Louise, and you know, there are people in our audience who are going through difficult things, and sometimes, I mean, to go back to what Crystal was talking about, sometimes that happy ending just ain't going to cut it. They need to see people who have made it through. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. What a wonderful mm -hmm. conversation. Thank you, Louise. We still have time for a few more questions. Does anyone have a question? Um. I'm gonna butcher your name, please unmute. Hello, Susan Nori, my name is Jing Chiu. Uh, so I have a question uh, for new writers. Uh, so I just started yeah. writing first play in my background is in choreography and dance filmmaking. Uh, so my oh, question, cool. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear advice about uh, for someone who just started writing. Uh, how would, would you prior would you prioritize? reading and watching as many plays as possible to really understand how the structure works? Or would you prioritize uh, just start writing and then drawing from my experiences in other artistic forms and really explore how that could bring maybe more, more innovation or new ways of thinking about playwriting? Oh, wow, what a great question. Congratulations. Welcome to the world of dramatic writing. Yeah. <laughs> We're so happy to have you. Um, I would say both. I mean, what's great about reading plays is you can get plays from, you know, the library or the bookstore, and it doesn't cost a lot, except it costs your time to sit and read plays. And you get a great sense of, of you know, oh, so many great plays are available um, and you can read them. That really helps. Also going to plays, which is is more of a cost point, but you know, if you can go in and get some rush tickets, it's wonderful to see plays. Um, and writing, both, both, both. You know, how is your, you, your art your choreographer, so you've probably got a really strong artistic practice. Um, you can use that. You can embrace your artistic practice as a choreographer and have it help you create a writing practice. Um, mm. You know, do you have a writing practice already? Um, yes, normally in the morning, I try to read first and then write for like half an hour. Yeah, that's, you're amazing. Look at you. Okay, then then you're, you're, you're all set. Um, I would say just keep the writing practice going and maybe start asking yourself, or maybe you have this answer already, who are my characters? Mm -hmm. What's their story? Think of two points, make a line. Where did they start? Where do I see them ending? And then you'll start, what do they want? Start asking mm -hmm. questions. Maybe you can even talk to them interview them, get them talking to you, you know, and, uh, uh, oh, I can't wait to, to see your play. Thank you. I think the two points, I, one line idea. It's really, really like line. Yeah, it's geometry. So, you know, it's helpful, but Thank that's you. where in your choreography practice, you can use that to help your writing practice, right? Like we use geometry to help us in playwriting or dramatic writing. It's Everything is connected. And so when we see and accept the, the, the interconnectivity of all things, we're like, oh, great. I know one thing. I can use it to help me understand another thing. Yes. Thank you so much. It's a great question. 
Great, thank you so much. Um, I want to also make sure I'm pronouncing your not name correctly. Sean? Is it Sean? Yes, Sean, please unmute yourself. Hi, kind of uh, bouncing off of that last question. I'm also new to playwriting. Um, and something I've, I'm working on right now is a 10 minute play. And I Great. know where I'm starting and ending up. Um, and I, I guess what I'm struggling with is finding ways to extend the conversation where I'm not kind of just immediately jumping to the end. Right. You know, how right. do I, I, and to do that in a natural way, like sure. how do I come up with twists and turns that would make a, a story natural? Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. It's like what we were talking about with, with Rocky, right? You, you have your, you know, where they're starting, you know, where they're ending. So you've got your two points and you're going to create lines of dialogue and to extend the conversation. Let's see if we have any like, well, problem. So, you know, here's somebody and they want to go like, da, 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 da. they want to go across the screen, right? What's going to stop them? Lo, it went so fast, but obstacles, obstacles, right? obstacles so if two people want to i don't know they they meet and they want to let's just say get married right it might take a little longer if one of them is already married obstacle if one of them is scared of commitment obstacle if one of you see what i mean just just start making up what you can do is make lists of okay my this character wants again what do your characters want this character wants this this character wants this what are their obstacles to getting it and what are they going to do to get the obstacles out of the way so they can get to their goal line? Does that make sense? Yes. And you can just make up stuff. It doesn't have to be like yeah. the best obstacle ever. Just make up crazy shit. Oh, look, there's a pothole. You know, they're trying to get across. Oh, there's one. Ah, I fell. I have to crawl out of the pothole. I just crawled out of the pothole. Okay, now I continue on. You say, oh, now I'm being picked up by a crane. All kinds of stuff. Now my library book is late. Oh my God, I ran out of money. You know, I know it sounds silly, but when you see it in really cool plays, or I mean, I mean, I come, he comes home for his parents, uh, his step parents, uh, stepfather's wedding, and then he sees the ghost of his father, obstacle, right. Hamlet. <laughs> mm. You can also make lists of your obstacles for your favorite plays. He gives away his kingdom. He thinks he's going to enjoy retirement. Obstacles. His daughters are highly problematic. King Lear. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're really problematic. Yeah. And why? When he, and then he thinks, oh, she's problematic. So I'll go to the other one and enjoy retirement. Ah, she's problematic too. Obstacle. Okay. Yeah. See? You just, yeah. just make up shit. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to the world of dramatic writing, where we make up shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Thanks for joining us today, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Hey. Hi. How are you? Hey, we're good. Good. Hi, everybody. Hey. Um, um I've I've been um I've been meaning to ask this question for a couple of weeks. I just couldn't really figure out how to really ask it so it made sense. So I'm just gonna blurt it out, I guess. Um, I've asked you or we've discussed the process of revision a couple of mm -hmm. times and um, it, it's still a, an absolutely fascinating area. And I don't, as a writer, I don't think I've a hundred percent wrapped my head around it yet, which is kind of okay, I guess, because it's a process. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I don't want to get to the point where you just like hate your writing. It's like, okay, I'm done. Cause I don't want to look at you anymore. Right. And I know sometimes there are deadlines or people are expecting something. So you have this artificial, well, I guess I better finish it by Tuesday because I have a play reading or whatever it is. Um, so I, I'm guessing like, and I know you've said before, and this has been really helpful, stand up, walk around with your material, read it out loud. And that's, that's awesome advice. And it really works really well. But how do you stay in the process of revision and A, feel like you're moving forward and B, keep it fresh. So you're not just spinning. Right. So how was your self-talk, Lisa? <laughs> did, I, did I always ask you this question? 
No, you don't. <laughs> but I'm laughing because I don't think I'm a good self talker. Ah, what do you mean? You mean you don't you don't say anything? There's not no sound of your own voice going on in your head, or you say weird things to yourself? I think I say weird things to myself. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Well, good. I mean, good because we have something to work with. So regulate, be mindful of your self talk. That's something that helps. So if you're you want to keep it fresh, you know. I'm working on this and it's getting better every day. I know how to do this rewrite. This is a beautiful story. You know, things like that. Things along those lines. Positive, encouraging things that you're going to say to yourself a lot. Like so much that, you know, like, do you have, have you ever, have you ever seen anybody like with a puppy or with a, you know, like a pup, like a puppy dog, like that. You're going to be your own puppy. Like, oh, good job. Good job. Yeah. Why not? Why not? No one's going to hear you. It's no, you're not going to be saying it out loud, like on the corner in front of my building. And I'm going to go, oh, there she goes. You know, no, you're just going to say loving, kind things to yourself. You're going to hypnotize yourself because you're the one thinking in your head. So that with actually sitting down every day and doing the work. That's, that's, that's one way to get it done. I tell myself, I do this all the time. Okay. You, you can do this. You can do this. You got this, you know? And when I catch myself going, oh, I, get it. I bring myself, yes, you do. My, my husband can see into the future. My, surround yourself with people who can see into the future and see your bright future. My husband can see into the future. He's invariably saying, wow, I really love that new song you wrote. I'm like, what new song? He's like, the one you're working on. I'm like, I'm not done yet. He's like, yeah, but, you know, it, it, it's done in my head and it sounds great. So the rewrite, it's done in your head. It sounds great. You're on the right path. Start say, and invariably, you start saying those things and you stand a better chance of having a, a successful rewrite by the deadline. And it's going to be good enough for the deadline and you'll have a chance to rewrite it some more later because it's a play, right? Or a screenplay. And, 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 you know, these things are works in progress until they're like in the can or frozen on Broadway, you know? And I mean, not the musical Frozen, but the show is locked on Broadway, you know? Mm -hmm. You have a chance. Give yourself a chance. Serious. And I'm I'm going on limb. You, you, you're hard on yourself, I'm guessing. No, because of the things you've told me about your writing community, people really like give you like, yeah, tough love notes. Yeah, we're going to punch her. And that then she'll be, you know, mm, yeah, yeah, it didn't work that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It, it, I mean, it, 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 it might, but it's awfully painful. And the world is difficult enough. And so we can give ourselves some positive encouragement and seek communities that are encouraging, not, not, you know, not without teeth, not without, come on, you know, this kind of encouragement. Come on, you can do it. Okay. So okay. find three things, three supportive things to say to yourself about your writing and say them constantly. And come back here and we'll see you soon. Okay. You no, know, really. It's, and it's real and it really, really works. And I do it all the time all the time really and it's six o'clock okay i have one little thing the watch me work suggestion of the week a suggestion for your, your digestion you know um someone who um one of uh, a vocal a brilliant vocal coach whose name is martine he told me the other day because <clears throat> i'm practicing you know how to sing and stuff and he said you know, you should remember that every time you take a breath in, it offers you a chance to reset. And I said, that is such a cool thing to keep in mind. Every time, every time you inhale, you're giving yourself a chance to reset. Yeah, so love you guys. We will see you not next week, but the week after. Is that correct? Team dramaturgy, team new work development. Yes. Yeah, yes. next week, but then on the 25th. Correct. Yes. So now our next meeting is the 25th. Okay. Bye. Okay, Have a good one.